verse 12 through 23. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest us no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. And the believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Then the high priest rose up, and all that they were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Highlight that, that, that line right there. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, highlight this, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now remember, we're, we're, we're tying this whole Acts 5, 12 through 23 to Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, to, <coughs> excuse me, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And after I pray tonight, I want to teach you this message, get back in the ring. Get back in the ring, okay? Amen. Father, I ask you to mortify the deeds of my body, the works of my flesh. Raise up a standard of thy spirit in me. Speak a word that will edify, equip, and ignite this body of Christ to do greater works in thee. I pray that my speech and my teaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of your spirit and power. That the people's faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Send now your anointing upon this your man servant in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So tonight we're going to get back in the ring. Now, most of us understand boxing. We've seen it. Um, we understand that boxing or MMA happens inside of what they called the squared circle. And as any good boxer, if you're going to be a good boxer, you're going to have many competitive fights. You're not just going to have one usually going to see a record of 27 and 3 or 27 5 and one tie that means they won 27 times they lost five and they tied one and what it made me realize is that even as christians we get into the ring of christianity oh god the moment you got saved you stepped into the ring with the enemy and ever since that day You've been in a fight going round after round. Problem with most people, uh, when they get into the ring with the enemy, they really didn't expect being Christian to be this hard. Oh, you're not going to say that. Like, oh, God, I'm already smoking. I'm sorry. You, you heard me over there, didn't you? Good. I'm, okay, good. I said they did not expect Christianity to be this hard. They thought that, you know what, I'll get saved, and after I'm saved, I'm just going to be on fire for the Lord for the rest of my life, and every day is going to be glory, hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus, because you're going to provide. And then they found out that they got hit with a right hook and a couple uppercuts that they did not expect to get hit with. And then what do you do when you're already saved you're already Christian, but you done got knocked down to the ground. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, the Bible says, the Bible says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Here's the problem with getting hit. If you really... You, know, you ever heard this expression? Matter of fact, you remember the old, uh, it's not like in the new uh, uh, cartoons that these kids watch, but when we grew up, when, when uh, Bugs Bunny or Coyote got hit by something, they had stars yeah. going all around and their eyes looked crazy because anytime you really get hit hard, you lose sight. Oh, I just said something. Did I say something? I know I said something right there. 
Anytime you really get hard, you begin to lose sight and focus of why you were in the fight in the first place. One of the hardest things to watch now is MMA because once they really get hit hard and you can tell that they're dazed and the guy keeps coming at them because he starts pounding them because he knows they lost sight. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. See, you got to watch out for the enemy. He knows when you as a believer have been knocked down. And the moment he knows you got knocked down and your sight is a little bit off, that's when he jumps on you and starts throwing blow after blow after blow after blow because he wants you to tap out. He wants you to quit. He wants you to throw in the towel and say, I can't take it no more. But Paul told Timothy, he said, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. My God, he said, endure hardness. That means you got to go ahead and go through this moment of pain. I know you're getting hit upside the head. I know you're losing focus. I know you've lost your equilibrium. You don't got no balance right now. But if you could just fan him off you long enough, eventually your sense, your senses will come back to you. But watch this. You got to get your guard up. God, I feel you right here. <laughs> Hallelujah. This for me. Because 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4 says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. He said the moment you got in the ring, you can't get caught up in what you hear from the crowd. Because watch this, your trainer gave you, he trained you on the way you should fight this fight. But the crowd don't know that your trainer told you, keep your guard up, keep your elbows tucked tight, because well, you know what the crowd want to see? They want to see haymakers. They want to see you make that one big blow. And that's what most Christians do. They try to make that one big blow. I got saved, and that means that the enemy should be knocked out. I should never have to worry about him anymore. But see, a good fighter knows I might have to go some rounds. So I got to condition myself. <laughs> oh God, I got to condition myself. Watch this. And, and watch this. A good fighter doesn't just train on jabs. See, that's why I don't get caught up when I see people in the gym and then now they have the big punching bag and somebody over there, they're trying to shine about the, about the bag on the way they hit. I, I, I was watching this guy. He was hitting this bag and he's looking all sweet and everybody's watching him. He had on the MMA gloves. Everybody was watching him. And then I walked back by him and I put out this Bruce Lee line that said, boards. Don't hit back. You remember that from yeah. Bruce Lee? Uh, huh? Yeah. Come on, Return of the Dragon. Yeah. Bruce Lee told him, he said, look, boy, you, you can hit the hit, you can punch all you want to, but it ain't throwing nothing back at you. So a good fighter watch this trains to get hit. Whew. Oh God. I said a good fighter will train to get hit. In other words, watch this. They tell me to roll with the punch. Yes. Yes. My God. See, 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 if I roll with the punch, watch this. If I roll with the punch, I just roll into prayer. Yes. And then I get right back up, come right back at him. And if he hits me again, I roll back into prayer. And I get right back up and I come back at him. But if I don't roll with the punch, if I don't train to get hit, then guess what? He'll hit me. I'll lose sight, lose my equilibrium, and I'm just going to be an open target. And that's where most of the church is. We're just open targets right now. We're just going to church being open targets, waiting for the next thing to go wrong. Is this helping anybody? Yeah. This is how I know uh, that, the, that they were in the ring already because the Bible called them apostles. It said that the apostles were uh, uh, working many signs and wonders, healings. Peter was... His Bible says, even the shadow of Peter, he just walked by. Hold up, no, no speech, no calling, no service, no big conference. See, that's why I didn't want to, uh, that, when I called this revival, I didn't expect crowds. And as a matter of fact, I was really trying to shun away crowds. I don't want praise team. I don't choirs. I just want that one person that the Lord is pricking to get back in the ring. My God, and I think I got him tonight. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, sir. So, so watch this. So we know that they're apostles. We know that they were in the ring. But according to the scriptures, the Bible says that the high priest caught them throwing blows and he threw them in prison. 
one of the hardest things to do as a fighter is get knocked out and then have the desire to get back in the ring with the chance of being knocked out again. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. My God, my God. Help me, Jesus. Verse 18 from Acts chapter 5. The word says, and they laid hands on the apostles and they put them in the common prison. Okay? It says they put, they put them in the common prison. The word common means demosius. It means the public prison and in full view. One of the greatest uh, knockout blows of the enemy is that when he fights us as the church and we fall or we mess up, he always makes sure it's in public view. Either your family knows it, your friends know it, so it makes it worse. Your enemies get to see you get knocked out. Oh, y'all yeah, ain't gonna say that. Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. They, they, they get to see you get locked up. They get to see you get knocked over. They get to see you lose the house, get your lights cut off, get your water cut off. And, and here you are being a confessor of the kingdom. And they're like, oh, but you Christian. Yes. And that's the first thing they throw in your face. Yes. So you got to imagine, here they are apostles, apostles with titles, and they in prison. Yes. In the common. Hold up. They didn't, what, they didn't even get to go to the feds. They had to go to the state with everybody else. Come on. So in other words, even when they got knocked out, they were trying to make it look like they were nothing special. See, see, the enemy trying to work on y'all tonight. He wants y'all to feel like y'all no, ain't nothing special. Y'all just the average. Y'all ain't got to get involved in the church. Y'all just, y'all can't contribute nothing. Y'all don't have nothing to contribute. So y'all might as well just sit back and don't do nothing. See, the devil is a liar. He should never put you in the common prison. My God, my God. <laughs> Woo, see, see, if God would have made your battle private and no one knew, you might not feel the way you do. But since there are a lot of people that know that you confessed it, now you feel a certain way. In other words, if you would have got knocked out privately and there was no crowd, okay, who cares? Yes. Don't nobody know. They might see a scar the next day, but that's, I can say I fell down. Yes. Yes. Oh, God. Yes. But see, God allowed you to get knocked out in front of people yes. on purpose. Yes. Okay. So that they can see the outcome. Huh? So they can see the outcome. So they can see the outcome. Okay, but watch this, watch this. See, so, so right now, what you got to realize is how the apostles feel in a common prison. I was, watch this. I was doing your will, Lord. I was teaching. Signs and wonders was happening. I was, watch this, at the top of my game. And all of a sudden, he snuck me. Put me all the way out. Now, here's where the hard part comes in. I got to choose to get back in the ring before I get in the ring. Let me say that again. What is good? <laughs> I've got to choose to get back in the ring before I get in the ring. See, the apostles knew if I go back to teaching, there's a possibility that I can get knocked out again. Are you hearing me? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in full faith. You're, are you hearing my God? So, so say, I got a choice. I got a choice. Come on, I, say, I got a choice. Uh, uh, Psalm 25, verse 2, the Bible says, the Bible says, says, Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. The psalmist literally says, God, don't let me be ashamed. You ain't got to say that if evidently you ain't going through something. Evidently, the psalmist got knocked down by the enemy. And he says, listen, God, don't let me be ashamed. I trust in you. I trust in your purpose for my life. In other words, it couldn't have happened unless you allowed it. My God, my God. My God, I feel you. Oh, give me five. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. I, I had to go get that five, y'all. 
So you got to realize I couldn't have gotten knocked out unless God allowed me to get knocked out. You know, oh God, I'm, 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 I'm almost there. We're almost done. My God, I'm, I'm almost there. So he says, he says, he says this. He says, let not my enemies triumph over me. In other words, I got to declare to, to, uh, to God, God, I need your help because you know what? They think they got the victory. They think that they put me down. They think that they can contain me at 8824 Old Mountain Road. But don't they understand I am the spirit of fire? I will burn my way out of anything that you put me in. Woo, give me five again. Glory to God. That's what I'm talking about. My God, I will burn my way out of anything. I don't care how much you knock me down. I'm like when I'm weaver, but I wobble, but I won't fall down. I'll just keep getting back up. I'll irritate you so much until you stop trying to knock me down because you realize I just keep getting back up. Why do I keep getting back up? Because God has purpose for your life. Say, God has purpose for my life. My God, God has purpose for my life. If you don't understand that, my God, then you got to understand what the old hymnologist used to say. He said, I will trust in the Lord, my God, until I die. And then if it got really good to the old saints, they say, I will stay on the battlefield until I die. That means I'm not going nowhere. And as long as there is breath in my body, you best believe that I will be coming back for my title. Lord have mercy. He got all the whole Shabbat, bye bye. He got it, 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 oh, it So now, now see, see, let me, let, me, let, me tell me, let me tell you something tonight. When you start getting that kind of attitude, when you start getting that kind of emotion, when you start making that kind of confession in the common prison, wait a minute. I didn't say make that confession when you were laying on hands and there were signs and wonders and miracles and your bills were paid. I'm talking about when the lights are off and the water's not running and the kids are crazy and you're still walking around the house talking about, I'll trust God. I know he's able. I know God will work it in my favor. It might be a couple of days in the dark but I still believe in the light and as long as you can do that God has a way of working on your behalf and when you do that the Bible said that the angels <laughs> the Bible says that the angels and matter of fact let me read it out of Acts chapter 5 because I yeah, yeah, might have skipped past that uh -huh, uh, yeah, the Bible says in verse 18 of Acts chapter 5 and they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel, verse 19, of the Lord. Oh, God, let me say it again. But the angel of the Lord by night. He waited till it got dark. I ain't going to get no help. He waited till it looked dark for you. He waited till it looked like you weren't going to get out at all. And everybody was going to sleep thinking, yeah, they locked up forever. We ain't got to worry about them. But God said, you know what? They've been confessing me. They've been telling everybody about me, even when they wasn't working in their favor. And because they've been talking about me, I've been talking about them. Well, who are you talking to, God? I'm talking to the angels. I'm telling angels to be dispatched on their behalf, to go and get them, deliver them, set them free. Don't allow them to be locked up. What am I saying? I'm going to tell you what I'm saying because he told me to say it in prophecy. My God, he told me, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Worry, worry. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right there. There were some things that had you locked up, but angels are getting ready to unlock what's been locking you away. My God. My God. I'm, I'm the whole Shabbat. I'm telling you, some angels are going to take your paperwork. I see it right now. And lift it up from where it was to where it's supposed to be. Oh, God. Who get the whole da 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 my God, I'm talking about stuff that had you locked up. Angels are unlocking it. Wait a minute. If you read the scriptures, the, the doors didn't open. The guards weren't moved. I ain't going to get no help. Who could they? God's getting ready to open up a brand new door in the prison that they never had built. My God. They, my God. Tell your neighbor, I got a way out. I got a way out. I got a way out. And since I got a way out, I have got to get back in the ring. My God, I got to get back in the ring. Why do I got to get back in the ring? Because the audience that saw me when I got knocked down for God wasn't big enough. It wasn't big enough. So what he had to do was get you knocked down, get you locked up, and then let you get right back to where you started from so he could get a bigger audience because you're getting ready to head for a bigger blessing. Tell your neighbor, get back in the ring. Who get back in the ring? I got one more scripture right here. My God, right here. 
1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, the Bible says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many, before many witnesses. Paul told Timothy, if you going to fight, make it a good fight. Don't be one of those wimps that swing one blow and think it's going to be over. I'll tell anybody, a good fight is when you throw a blow and hit them, and then they throw one back at you, and they hit you. That's a good fight to me. If you just hit them and they get knocked out, that's not a good fight. A good fight is when you got to tussle a little bit and you got to try to find out who is stronger and you, oh God, my God, my God, my can I, can I say, okay, okay, I'm getting too excited. I'm getting too excited. I, I love the Lord. I love the Bible. The Bible loves me. My God. My God. So I'm, I'm just, I'm going to tell you this one last thing I'm going to tell you, then I'm going to get out your way. If you're going to fight this good fight for the other faith, if you're going to get back in the ring, if you decide that, you know what, I've been out of the ring long enough. I haven't been stepping up. I haven't been worshiping. I haven't been praying. I haven't been reading. I haven't been what I'm, what I'm supposed to do. But you know what, God? You open marches. I got my vision back. I understand why I'm in the ring now. I understand the strategy that you gave me when I'm supposed to be in the ring. I just didn't train to hit things. I got trained to get hit. So when I get hit, it don't even bother me because now I'm going to start walking through. Oh, you hit me? Oh, <laughs> Okay, hit me again. I tell you what, let me drop my guard and let you get a couple in just to let you know that no weapon formed against me is going to be able to prosper. And this is my only advice is that if you get in the ring, swing for the fences. My God. Oh, oh, oh. Swing for the fences. Swing like you're going. Okay. 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 Get back in the ring. Right there. Get Praise the Lord. Back in the ring. I'm going to reach it all over just for her. You know I am. Come on. Amen.